Okay, so we've got a Motu Ultralight that has a very dim screen. Um, I fixed it yesterday, but I thought I'd pull it apart and show you what I did so that uh, you can do the same if you've got the same problem. It's um, a backlight problem that many of these have, apparently. So uh, let's have a go. I'll uh, fast forward through a lot of this stuff because it's pretty basic. We need a little spanner to hang on to that. What have we got? Okay, now there's a couple of screws on these two uh, microphone jacks. Let's get those out. They, um, another one there, I think. Oops, out, not in. Right out. So that loosens that up. Take all of these knobs off. Okay, they're all off. Now we should be able to ease this off in a minute. But before we do that, now that we've got that screw off this uh, microphone connector, you can ease this back panel back and then get this microphone uh, output card off. I'll just pull up. You see it's confidently. There it is. So that just once you can pull this panel back, it flexes back, then you can just lift this out. Be careful, it's got some fairly long pins. There they are, kaboing. So that comes out. Put that aside. Now, it gets a bit interesting now because there's a screw holding this bottom panel down right here in the corner, and it is you've got to get this power supply board out first before you can get at that screw. And that, uh, so that's the only screw that's, screw that's still holding it in, apart from two of these columns that um, that go into the bottom panel. So we'll, that one's not one of them. I think it's this one here. You need a one quarter socket. Just loosen that off. There it is, it's this one. And there's this one. So they've got a little um, screw thread sort of bolt protrusion thing there, so you need to get that out. And this one here is another one. So get that out. There it is. Those two um, can stay on the board. They don't go into the bottom plate. So they, you can see we've almost got the, uh, the board out, but there's one screw here in the corner. Now before you can get that out, you've got to take this panel out. It has um, push pins that slide in there. Just got to ease those out. The way to do it is to pop this back board off slightly, and then you can ease this back panel out. It's a bit of a trick, but there it is. It comes out much easier than it goes in. That's the uh, power supply and um, MIDI board. So there's that screw I was talking about down there in the corner. See it here. We need to uh, get that one out. Number two screwdriver. Now the reason we're doing this is so that you can see the well. The mods I've already made. Um, you see this red wire here. That's not in your Motu ultralight. That is a 5 volt power supply that goes to the LED backlight. Um, now by probing around on the board, 
uh, what you can actually see on the board, there's a little label that says 5 volts just about there. And uh, there's a nice little um, uh, through connector that you can uh, solder onto. So I just got this bit of wire and soldered it on there and ran that through to through to the uh, the anode of the uh, LCD uh, backlight just up here. It's the top um, connector there, uh, but I'll show you that in a sec a bit better. So we can lift the whole thing out now. The best way to do that is to just grab these two mic connectors and out it comes. So we'll just pull that aside. And there it is there. Now, you can see here where I've um, soldered onto, just there, you've got a, an anode um, connector that you can uh, solder the other end of the wire through to. I've removed the original um, uh, voltage supply there. Um, this is the ground down the bottom. Um, now what I found using a multimeter was that I was only getting three and a half volts here, which isn't enough to light the, um, the backlight up, uh, the backlight LED up properly. So I hunted around on the board and found a five volt uh, supply point here. But on the underside of the board, there's another one that's easier to get to. And I'll show you where that is. So this row of pins here are the pins that go to the connector that comes to the side of the LCD. And this pin here has 5 volts. If you take um, your multimeter and put the negative on the power inlet um, plug, and put your positive probe on that pin there, you'll find that it's 5 volts. So what you could do is you could solder a wire onto that pin, run it up along here through that gap and then onto the back of the um, LED, um, either onto the pin that uh, the positive connects to, or, oh, a bit of my beard there, or um, just go to um, the anode connector, which I'll now show you. So what I'm going to do first is just remove this cable connector. Let's see if I can do that without breaking anything. Wiggle jiggle. So that comes off there. And then what you can see here is the LED panel is this panel here. That's the back of it. Um, now this connector here is the one that the original power supply connector goes to normally there but as I said I was only getting three and a half volts from that so I've taken that off could leave it on I guess but I don't know what would happen then and I've soldered directly onto a pad there that connects to that pin so I've got five volts coming off the board here running along that red cable going into the LED panel there. Um, uh, well, the LED backlight. And that makes it light up like a brand new one. Um, I didn't have to replace uh, the LED board at all. Um, so this has been a nil cost um, hack that's got my ultralight working perfectly.
So now we've got to put it back together again and um, once you've done your soldering with this wire either to there or to that pin I showed you underneath you'll have the fun of putting it all back together again and that's not as easy as you'd think but uh, we'll give it a go. With this one you want to mark uh, the top and the bottom before you pull it off. The top two pins on mine end up uh, unused so you put the bottom pin in the bottom hole and there's a screw in the way but it goes on well enough. Okie dokie. We'll leave that one out there. Put this one back on. May as well put this back on. Can't see. There it is. Just being gentle. Okay, that. We'll just tuck that in here. It won't cause any trouble. Righto. So this is the bottom panel. How can you tell? It's got that sticker on it there. So... Here we are. So that screw hole there needs to go over that hole there. Got that in the right place. And up this end, the front panel needs to slide into the slot. Right, so I've got this front part of it in correctly. The real trouble is getting this back panel and that power supply board, MIDI board back in. It is really tricky. I'll see what I can do. Hang on a sec. Actually, before I put that back in, I'm going to lift it out again. Because I want to tighten up the screws underneath these two columns to uh, make sure they're not rattling around loose. So just hang on a sec. If you look under here, you'll see those screws there and there. Um, so we want to grab a hold of that column with a little spanner and tighten her up. And the other one. Where is it? Right. So they'll be snug now. So that's now in nice and snug and now the fun starts. What you've got to do is you've got to get this you've got to get this panel half on before you can do anything. So there's going to be a bit of faffing around going on here. The trick is to get it to get it underneath these fire wire connectors. Now you, you can sort of flex the board up a bit to help out, but it really is tricky. If somebody figures out a better way to do this, please show us how. 
I'm actually going to loosen this screw a bit first. To get this started in there. That's not too bad. Okay. So try and keep that bottom edge under the, the firewire connectors. Then tighten this screw. Now you can still bend this out, which gives you the chance to get this in. So we've got this MIDI and power supply board. Tuck it in so that this power supply connector snugs in first, and then watch these pins at the back and just wriggle them until they're in the right place. And then get these pins down here into that connector. There's about eight of them. They've got to go in the right hole. There they are. My golly, that was easier than last time, which I'm glad about. Now we have to try and lift this board up to get this panel in. Try and make sure it stays under those fire wires because they're the problem. So you can grab it by the, the cannon connector, the mic connector, pull her up, and then wriggle and jiggle until it pops in. There it is. Oh, I'm very glad that was as easy as that. Now we take these two little pillars, screw those in, they go through the board and into the bottom plate and should screw in easily enough. This one goes here. Just using a quarter inch driver. Don't over tighten because you'll strip these things. It's tempting. Don't use power tools for this, you can't feel what you're doing. Those two are already tight. So now we take this other board we removed, which is all the outputs. Now they've got a gazillion pins that need to slot in. So you sort of got to push that panel out, find the, locate the holes, and the panel sort of eased away, it just pushes in. Boom. There it is. to be nice and snug because you're, you're pushing with the power supply plug into that. Alrighty now a few more screws to go in around the board.
those screws are snug. Let's just check that connector is on. That one's on. Our little custom wire is still there. The um, importantly the the negative is connected. I left that off when I did this yesterday and the thing didn't work. I thought I'd broken it until I opened it up again and realized that uh, simply because the negative um, wasn't connected. So that went better. Alrighty, all we need to do now is put the little screws in for the microphone inputs. Not too tight. So everything seems to be about in the right places. So we'll just stick the lid back on. So now we've got no two like that. The ultralight sitting right. So now all four corners go down nicely and you know what to do. Alright, that should be it. I'll just go and get some power and see if it uh, see if it works. Here we go. Oh, found some power. So the power plugs in where you know. About there. And uh about we'll put some knobs back on. Should come on. Let's have a look. Is it coming on? And there it is. How to get your Moto backlight, uh, your ultralight LED backlight working on the LCD display. And here we are in better light. Well, we'll see how it works. It's good, starting up. And there we go. So that is much better than it was before. It's got uh, the full 5 volts going to the supply. So that is the way it's meant to work.